Hello, fabulous Springs fans and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, I'm just so thrilled today. I just barely can contain myself because I get to talk to superstar, incredible astrologer, Rebecca Gordon. Now, I've been kind of connected to Rebecca for a while. We've run into each other at conferences, but I really got to know her when she was doing different media appearances, in particular on Dr. Oz. And I have seen her go into spaces where you don't normally see astrology. And I'll tell you, she has done me proud so many times. I've been so proud of her, of the way in which she represents astrology, like such a pro intelligent, beautiful, charismatic, just this amazing, amazing person. And so I am so excited and proud that she is going to be one of our incredible speakers at Embracing the Community, a celebration of astrologies, what I'm calling the conference event of the year. It is a joint London School of Astrology and Synchronicity University event. Now there is a limited use code for 50% off the conference costs. And you can find that code in the description below and you can check out synchronicityuniversity.com to learn even more about this conference. So Rebecca is the founder of a 17-year running astrology school and resident astrologer at Harper's Bazaar. I told you she goes into these spaces that you don't normally see astrology and shine so brightly there. So she's known for her astrological experiences with companies such as Adobe, Four Seasons, and Gary V. It is her mission to align people with their own unique brand of stardust. And you can find her at RebeccaGordonAstrology.com. Rebecca, welcome. Thank you for being here. Nadia, thanks so much. That was, wow, I'm blushing. That was, thank you for that. Um, and I've thoroughly admired you over the years. So it feels really good to hear that from somebody who I've just admired so much. And you're your sparkly effervescence, Nadia. I love it. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here. And I'm really psyched about our conference coming up too. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Like that really does mean so much to me coming from you, because like I said, I just love how you represent astrology in these spaces where astrology just doesn't really have the opportunity to go. And there you are shining bright and representing astrology so well. And so I know that you began as a professional astrologer way back when you were 14 years old. So can you tell me about the start of becoming a professional astrologer and then how it feels to be in these very uh, unique spaces where you get to go to? Well, just, just a quick correction. I can't say I was a real professional at 14. Like I wasn't <laughs> taking money, right? But um, I definitely got my sea legs going at 14. And uh, that was the time at which, uh, you know, I, I think in a way, um, there were some ingredients that were there, like many of us, you know, I had, I had um, bookshelves of interest, you know, near me, and there was a neighbor across the street, who was an astrologer who I ended up um, studying with over the years. Um, she became my stepmother very quickly. And I, then I had to live in astrologer. So yes, to just to say, so at 14, I began eating, breathing, drinking astrology, um, pretty much uh, all the time. And I had formal lessons every week with her. So from that point, um, I think I, you know, every day in high school throughout my years, I was just doing all my friends' charts, my grandparents' charts, my family's charts. And I, I whenever I could get my hands on another chart, that's all I asked people for. So I, I think I did half my high school um, in those years. And uh, you know, I got to know a lot, I think just from watching the behavior of my friends and family and looking at the charts and just asking questions was, was my beginning. Um, like I love to ask questions and that was my greatest teacher. I think learning about how they experienced their chart. So, uh, that, that was the beginning of it. And then, um, as you mentioned the school, I mean, I, I was still learning and not even thinking astrology could be a career. I was just kind of you know, thinking I still need to go to school and do something else and, you know, get my degree. But uh, it was probably, yeah, at age 24, where I kind of jumped off the merry-go-round um, and uh, astrology at that time, I was like, you know, I'm just going to share what I know. And I'm going to teach what I know. I don't know everything, but I'm going to share what I know now. And I will commit to continuing my education. Um, so that's when I started probably 
as a professional, I think I was about 24 when I left my day job, so to speak. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a while now. Um, and I was really young looking back on that. I'm like, I, a part of me is like, oh no, the things I must have said, I don't think I knew anything then, but you know how it is, Nadia, you attract at the time, the people that are ready for what you have to share. And I think, you know, now I would be attracting a, a totally different type of client, but, um, it wasn't, you know, that, that's, that soon after it was, it was soon after that, that I began working with businesses and companies. Like I was still in my twenties, I remember, um, and that, that work started to begin. It started, um, really through word of mouth as these things happen. And so with this like growth that's been happening, but you've also had the experience of going, like I said, you go to these spaces where astrology normally has not gone, right? Like you were on Dr. Oz, for example, that's where I really got to see your professional light shine and see how you've continued to grow. And so it's great. Like, of course you have that background. And so from a very young age, you made the astrology solid, but then it's almost like, I feel like you're at another level. I have to say other than a lot of other astrologers only because you take astrology and you're able to make it into something that is graspable by perhaps spaces and places and people that may not necessarily understand it. So what's that experience like? Yeah. So, okay. So at, at age 24 was probably when I went to my first astrology conference and I was like, huh, this is actually something people do as a career. And at that point I realized, wait a minute, you know, there was like thousands of people in the room there and I was the youngest person for sure. This was like before the young astrologers association and all that. And uh, so I, my first thought was wait, coming home from that conference, getting back to New York city. My first thought was that walking down the streets in New York, these people don't know about that. And what a shame. Why don't they know all of this beauty that they can just, they can discover themselves and they can feel more confident in their decisions and trust themselves more and love themselves more, have better relationships, have more compassion. I, I feel astrology is a study of compassion. And I thought, wait, this is not fair. It's segregated into that conference room, but then you walk out on the streets. So I, at that point, I think I made it part of my mission to actually bring astrology into the woven fabric of society. That was part of what I committed to doing in my mid twenties. And I remember clearly at my grandmother's house telling her about this. <laughs> I don't know what she thought, but, um, yeah, I was about 25 then. And I told her, I just came back from this conference and this is what needs to happen. I said, I want to bring it into the world, but I wanted to bring it into companies, into the everyday person's world in a way that would make sense to them. It's like, this is our birthright. This is a study of the natural cycles, um, a birth chart. You know, of course, it's like a prism. You can look at it in so many ways. And I think there's something in it for everybody. Ultimately, you know, you can, people can look at it from a perspective of, what sort of careers suit me or how can I best work with my health or, or how can I have better relationships? You know, there's all, there's so many ways to look at this magnificent prism we call the birth chart. So I thought I want to bring this to the world as much as I can. So um, that was, uh, that began early on. And I think I just started talking about it whenever I could to whoever I could, because you know how that is when you just start. <laughs> it just um, opened up conversations. So soon enough, somebody would say, oh, I, I know somebody in, in that company. I think you should talk to them there. And I would be on the phone with the CEO of a company and they, they would say, do you think you could come over and talk to my team about this and that? And, and uh, then I started creating these presentations and those sort of turned into larger team building events. And it just grew. And, and now I get calls from like Google and Adobe and all of these other companies, Gary V. And, you know, it just honestly grew organically over the last 17 years in that way. Um, but it was always my intention to really bring astrology into the larger fabric of business and society and give everyone access to this, uh, not, not to be this Hogwarts <laughs> school <laughs> up in the clouds, you know? Um, so, yeah. Uh, and I think that right now, as you know, Nadia, like astrology is having another renaissance. So it's amazing to see all of a sudden how many people are embracing it in a way that um, 
wasn't at all the scene 10 years ago, even, you know. So what do you think the Renaissance is about? Like astrologically, why do you think it's happening? But also like more personally in terms of people's experiences, why do you think that that is happening? Yeah, that's a great question. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too, actually. Um, I mean, on on a more, uh, on one level, I just think that people need meaning in life. And I feel like that's the one thing that's sort of been really stripped away um, in uh, post-capitalism. You know, people are feeling like cogs in a wheel. They're feeling like, what? why are we here? What are we doing? And, you know, as that, increase from the 80s 90s and 2000s you know this sense of meaning was stripped down and I always sort of imagine like this grocery store at the end of the world you know and and what's there the items that are sold are meaning you know that's it and astrology is much more than meaning but it's meaning and then some more but I think that um it really does give us a sense of personalization individuation why we are special why we are here and this is also what's been stripped down very much in the world as people are kind of, you know, as we know, it's throughout history. It's like you're born, follow the road that's paved, check off your things along the way. Um, it's really important and um, for, for there to be that personalization. Um, and I think that now just like it's becoming more acceptable, of course, um, I guess there are astrological factors to that, uh, but I think it's also societal. I think we've just kind of, in a cycle, we've reached that point where we can't go anymore on this, with Pluto and Capricorn especially. I think there's just questions, okay, why are we doing this? Why are we climbing this mountain? What is this mountain for, you know? And I think part of it has to do with um, the Pluto and Cap and Saturn and Cap and everything kind of reaching that point. And when, when COVID, happened it really hit that point and everybody just flew off from the top of the tower it was just gone you know and um like astrology was sort of like rising incrementally and i think it just spiked way up when covid hit and saturn pluto conjunction started you know the sort of question of we've been doing these things for our whole lives and why and now we're not so who am i what is this and these questions just became front and center centerpiece in the middle of the living room again. Uh, what do you think, Nadia? I'm so curious about astrology's <laughs> renaissance. Well, I'm glad you asked because I love putting my nerd hat on. Like I love these types of philosophical discussions. I was telling you before we started that I have a Sag moon. So of course I like to get all nerdy and think about why and all that kind of stuff. And I loved the things that you were sharing about uh, the renaissance and also that is happening right now with astrology. I think a couple of things come to mind based on what you were sharing. Um, Max Weber, who is this like godfather of sociology, he talked about the iron cage of postmodernism, which is this idea that we live in closer spaces than ever before, but we are more isolated from each other than ever before. And it's Patrick Curry who made this connection where he said that astrology helps us to feel connected. It helps us to break free from that iron cage of postmodernism. And so if we're connected to the sky and to the planets, then we must be connected to each other as well. And I remember one of the speakers, I was interviewing him, Alejo, and he was saying, Alejo Lopez, he was saying that he had the realization that because he's an astrologer and he has a connection to the planets, he's never alone. Like he never has to go through that sense of feeling like he's alone in the world. And I thought that was really powerful as well. So I think all of that is being fueled by what's happening now. But astrologically, you know, I think it's, I think it's Neptune and Pisces, actually. That's what I think it is. And I, I love that you talked about, you know, all this Capricornian energy. Capricorn is still an earth energy, right? So that is part of it as well. I'm, I'm looking ahead as an astrologer and I'm thinking all this Earth is going to start to turn to air <laughs> very yeah. soon, you know? Yeah. And so it'll be really interesting to see what happens because Neptune going into Aries, well, that's all about the will, right? The spiritualization of uh, if I will it, I can make it happen and, and being a law unto oneself. And then you look at all this air energy and it's so detached and rational and empirical. 
And so it'll be interesting to see how astrology responds to that, how astrology evolves along with that. But I think that astrology has always been here. That's the thing. Astrology evolves. It's a living practice. And whatever may come, there will always be people like you and I and people like you bringing astrology to these whole other spaces. And that is going to matter in the fullness of time to keeping astrology going. Completely. Yeah. Neptune and Neptune and Pisces and to Neptune and Aries. Last time that happened was this great rise of spirituality in the Theosophical Society into Neptune and Aries and the spiritualist churches and things like that, you know, in, in upstate New York, out of all places, right? Yeah. That all of that was um, the Neptune and Pisces to Aries. So yeah, second that for sure. Um, but it's it's amazing to be alive right now in this time because it's it is really a moment. And um, especially if you're, if you're an astrologer into any of these sorts of things, even I'm walking down the street in New York and I see in so many of these stores, they're selling like t-shirts with astrological signs all over the place now. And almost any item you can get based on your sign, you know, sunglasses for your sign or lipstick. For your I love sign. it. I love it. It's wild. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, It'll be interesting to see, agreed, when things move into air. I'm really looking forward to this Pluto and Aquarius as well, uh, because it's been feeling, you know, this density, this clunkiness, and we're already getting like a sense of this air and where it's going. I feel like we're already starting to loosen the grip on these old paradigms and ways and thinking maybe there's another solution. Maybe we don't have to work like this, maybe, but we haven't quite stepped into the next way yet. So, um, seriously looking forward to that glad we're going to be here for that transition I know right it's I love this time to be alive and ever since I was a little girl I've said that I want to live till I'm 150 years old and the reason is because I think I've always felt that my soul like I had an old soul and I always felt like I've had a lot of experiences that maybe are not of just this lifetime but I think it's pretty cool to like do everything in a single lifetime so that it's like, yeah, it happened this lifetime and I did it and I walked it. And I think it'll be so cool to see like who I become if I'm able and have the privilege to live to 150 years old. And so I, part of that, of course, being an astrologer, it adds that additional layer, like that additional layer of magic. Earlier, you were speaking about the Saturn-Pluto conjunction that happened at the beginning of 2020 in January 2020. And it's interesting how you connected that to astrology because I was thinking about how the last time that happened was about 500 years ago, and that was the Protestant Reformation. And if you think about what the Protestant Reformation is, it's basically this sense of a complete reorientation to our relationship to the divine. Like it literally took intermediaries out of the way. And it said that, okay, we don't need any intermediaries. You alone can decide what the word of God means. You alone are worthy of doing that. And that is a huge shift in consciousness that has, I think, created the world that we have today. And so it's interesting that you connect that to astrology, how astrology might be able to be a part of some shift of consciousness, the next leap of consciousness that we're preparing for. Oh, I love that. I love that thought and relating the Protestant Reformation to how we're using astrology. Right. Astrology has been through so much, right? It's been pushed under. And, you know, and there was one part of time where it was like, it was uh, suppressed, right? Because of religion. And then it's not suppressed. And then it's suppressed again. And it went in and out and, and popularity yeah, yeah. all through time. And now I think it's just becoming accepted that it's more and more so non-denominational. Like it's it's not it's being separated more and more from religion and people are almost seeing it. I mean, I hate to say this, but people are almost seeing it now as like a life hack or a, a tool, how to, you know, here's, oh, you can use astrology or you can make a green juice or you can do that. Or, you know, people are, it's, it's that uh, level of accessibility these days. Um, I mean, of course, when anything like that happens, there's going to be things that seep in to the world that, you know, real astrologers can say, oh, that's not, you know, the whole natal chart. Well, of course, you know, this is a bite-sized piece for what people can manage now. And they're going, it's, it's um, 
it's an appetizer and they're going to become more interested as they are. And then they start seeking out, um, you know, reading astrology articles and courses and learning and connecting to others. So it just grows and grows. I think, obviously I think Neptune and Aquarius um, and uh, the stellium in Aquarius in the nineties, the growth of the internet had a lot to do with setting the stage for it too. Um, as that's at the groundwork and then everything moved into Pisces. It says, okay, here's what we're going to put in the groundwork. Now that Aquarian network, that World Wide web and groundwork is set, well, it's being filled with Neptunian things right now. I mean, not all, some are good, some are bad, obviously. There's a lot of uh, hacking and things like that, you know, that's sleeping in, but there's, there's so much wonderful inspiration. And I think it's ultimately helping a lot of people. I mean, what I've seen in my work with the companies, I mean, I get letters from them afterwards, you know, and these are people that have taken like, Strengths Finder and DISC and all these other company tests to learn about themselves. And what specifically strikes me most when they speak about astrology, they speak about how it really opened them up emotionally. It gave them more compassion and understanding uh, for the other people they work with and connect to. Um, that feeling also of not being alone. And um, I think that there, it, it brings something else. It touches on something more so magic than any of these other kinds of assessments. So when, when I do, you know, go into these companies, yeah, they've never seen anything like this before and all of that. But I, I think that there's also this element of people want something that is not mundane. They want to be taken somewhere else. And they're so tired of the mundane day after day. It's like, not only, um, there's a need to feel connected. There is that to feel they're not alone, but also that it's so it's almost like a trust in their decisions. Am I really this? Can I trust this part of myself? And that's the biggest aha I see. People like, I knew I was that. I can actually trust myself and fully claim that. I think it's giving the everyday person right now that um, that kind of uh, just trust in themselves that people, it's sort of uh, pounded out of many people as they're growing up. And it's, it's doing an incredible thing in the world, even if it's simply letting people believe in themselves again right now and knowing that they have this unique individuality. And um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's watered down for sure in the masses, but it's also, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it needs to be to reach many people in the beginning. I love that. I love that you affirm that. And I totally agree with that as well. Like it doesn't need to be uh, super technical and all these formulas for the masses, because what astrology does is so much bigger than just a set of formulas and calculations. And so I, what I have really loved about astrology is that it affirms our connection to everyone and everything. It affirms a life of meaning and purpose. But I never thought of it as affirming trust the way that you just articulated it, which I think is so powerful that astrology encourages us to trust ourselves. And a lot of people just never allowed themselves to do that until they had an appreciation of how the astrology was reflecting what they need to trust themselves. That's very powerful. Yeah, I mean, at least when I started studying, I was 14. That's what I realized about myself. And you know how that is when you realize something around yourself, you think, well, maybe this can help other people with that as well. Um, you know, and, and I remember as well, just the feeling of compassion, like, you know, you can be so angry at your family or and everything. I remember seeing their charts early on and, and saying, oh, I understand why they do that. And I understand, you know, that Gemini moon or that, you know, Pisces or, you know, everything sort of, um, it, it opened my heart in a way that um, I think I've seen happen to other people as well when they start learning about it. There's so many, you know, it's just, it's such it's this magnificent prism. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to morph this work into with the companies, but I plan to create in the future, you're the first person to hear this, but I, I plan to create some kind of unique um, quiz that is like, it's a personality quiz and it's going to reflect um, aspects of the birth chart, but I'm gonna, it's just gonna be an interesting test to see um, how that relates to the birth chart. And I'm gonna bring this into the corporate and the company space on my one of my next visits. So I can't wait to um, create this 
and administer it, I think it'll bring back some interesting information. I don't know if it's going to prove anything or not. I'm just very curious to see how people fill it out these personality questions and what shows up in their chart and uh, how, the, how they interconnect and what that looks like. Well, I think you're the perfect person to do it. I will say with all your achievements, with all your successes, uh, of course, you're going to continue going and continue doing these wonderful and unique things and research and presentations, which I think is really exciting. And so speaking of success, let's segue over to finding your signatures for success, which is what Rebecca will be talking about as part of Embracing the Community, a celebration of astrologies taking place over the Autumn Equinox Weekend, the conference event of the year hosted by the London School of Astrology and Synchronicity University. So what is your talk going to be about? Thanks. I can't wait for this conference. Um, I'm, I'm so excited when I got the email from you about this. So my talk is going to be about the signatures of success in the birth chart and really what is what defining success for each person based on their chart. So I'm starting off looking at different, I call them ecologies. I create an ecosystem method of going into the chart. We see what kind of ecology each person is made up of what kind of environment, lifestyle suits them based on their personal ecology. And then I'm gonna be taking a series of charts, people from various kinds of careers, simply looking at things like the sun and the rising sign filter, first of all, and showing how career can even be looked at through a lens like that. And then we'll add in a few more ingredients. Um, and this is work that I've been doing, I'd say for the last 10 to 15 years, it's been a lot of the body of my work that I've done with companies. And I thought, wait, it's time to bring that work into back into the astrology space now. So that was the idea with this workshop was I would, I would take a lot of the work I've been doing with these teams in the team building and bring it back to the world of astrology. Um, and I think it's gonna be really interesting um, to share it in that way. I've never quite, quite done it in a, in a conference form. Um, so I'm really excited about it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to probably make it a little bit, uh, I'll, I'll make it significantly more, uh, astrological because I think of the language I use with the companies, I, I don't use too much astrology at all. So, uh, but I, I hope that for people studying astrology, that they will gain a new sense of inspiration and perspective on the chart and even how they can build out their career. Like even if there's um, aspiring or professional astrologers, astrology can look so different for all of us even. Um, like some people are more so writers or teachers or podcasters or researchers, right? There's so many things you can do in this world of astrology too. So I think uh, there are some general uh, ways that we can look into the chart and sort of gauge what are the best. I look at it like, you know, and the whole day is a pie, like the fabric of the day. I always think how much time do you want to be spending doing writing, like versus, you know, reading or being in nature, like we all have such different needs. And I think that if they're not really met, we tend to get frustrated or depressed or sick at worst, you know? Um, so it's really going to be all about how to look at the chart and have your ecology understood, your needs met to get into a career and lifestyle that suits you based on the chart. Um, that was so long-winded, but I- but Oh, I, I love that. it. What? I'm so excited. As you're talking, I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't wait to see what my chart says from Rebecca Gordon's perspective. I think this is going to be very exciting to learn. Yeah. It sounds amazing. I'm excited too. I mean, I'm going to go into a lot of detail. I got a lot of plans in Virgo, so I'll be quite thorough in the technique and hopefully you all can have fun with this technique after and you can get a sense of uh, your career picture. And then, yeah, I mean- I'm using it also for forming teams. So let's say you are starting a business on your own and you don't know where to hire out. Like a lot of us are like, I'm doing everything. I'm wearing all the hats. I mean, if you're using the system, you can get a better sense of where you actually and the kind of person, um, which isn't usually what we go for automatic. We usually kind of like people like ourselves, but that's not always the best thing astrologically. It's actually good to work with people very different from you who have very different skill sets. So we look at what that means in the chart and um, what kind of things to look for in others when you're forming a team and collaborating, working with others. Uh, so 
yeah, I mean, this, this will be a lot of fun. I'm excited to bring this kind of work into the conference space and also hear all of the other presenters too. Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting. I know that you'll add your own special perspective that I'm really looking forward to. And I'm really looking forward to learning from you. You know how much I respect you and how I think you're so brilliant and such a star in the world of astrology. So, so happy to have you as part of the conference, but also to learn from you in this conference setting. But I know that you also have a new class or program coming up with your own school as well, right? I do. I've been teaching this class for 17 years now. I can't believe it. It's my longest running course and it is beginner's astrology. Uh, it starts on September 30th. So coming up really soon, uh, it will begin. And really it's this very methodical organized class where I'm with all the students weekly. It's very hands-on. I love getting to know my students and, uh, they go through a full curriculum with me and they have study groups and we have little constellation groups as well and mentors and everything. So they get a lot of personal touch in there and it's a 12 week course. Uh, so that begins September 30th. Right now I'm just in the space of preparing for that and adding all these new fun things that you can do into the school system. So um, to try to make it more juicy and interesting for the students. I, I think the what we've been doing a lot lately is creating these constellation groups of four people that meet and that work with each other's charts. And I realized, you know, you can read all the books you want for decades, but that will not make you a great reader. So I'm really pushing them into the reading space with each other. And we talk about counseling skills, all sorts of things like that too, that I think are just as important as knowing the astrology. Yeah, of course. And I was thinking that it's a beginner's course, but no matter what level you are in astrology, foundations can always be made stronger. It's always valuable to go back and look at things from a more step by step. And I think, you know, to really teach the details, you're like the perfect person to do that. But to really be able to go back and, and to understand more deeply, whether you are a total new newbie, and you really are starting fresh, or whether it is that you've been around for a little while and you understand something about astrological language, it sounds like this course can be wonderful to help people of all kinds of levels in astrology. Yeah, strangely, I've had people that took the intermediate and then they decide they want to take the beginners. And I, there's a lot of those people. So, I mean, to your point, yeah. So that's going on. And, um, you know, I, I hope to keep on creating more courses and things like that because I'm having a lot of fun teaching. And, you know, as, as you do too, I know teaching oh, yeah. is like, as we were talking about before, just like how much satisfaction it brings to like, be able to kind of pass on the torches and to know that other people are going to sort of take these and run with it. Like I love mentoring and teaching more than anything. Uh, so it gives me great joy. I want to keep on doing that always, no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been doing it with your own school for 17 years and you're doing it in other spaces like the conference event uh, that is coming up embracing the community. So in so many ways, it just seems like, and also I'm thinking about how it's almost like your soul knew something at a very young age. Like I sort of needed my Saturn return and Pluto conjunct my moon at the same time to kind of kick my butt into gear to figure out like, okay, what am I supposed to do? But it seems like your soul understood at such a much younger age. Uh, and that truly shows up in terms of the legacy that you've already been creating with your work for so long. Yeah, you know, not. <laughs> I think there was a couple defining moments. Like I, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one really quickly. When I was, I think around 15 years old or almost 15, yeah, about 15, I saw something on Discovery Channel. Like, you know what? We only, you know, we only use 10% of our mind and that whole thing. And that just drove me nuts. I was like, wait, how can we only use 10% of our mind? You know how they used to always say that. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember just being so fed up with that. And I, this is not something I'm recommending or anything for everyone to do at 15, but I walked down to the city center and I bought a hit of LSD because I heard that, <laughs> that that could expand my mind. And I just wanted to use the rest of my mind. I was like, screw that. Only, only 10%, no way. Let's see what else is going on in there. And um, what know, did you discover? It was a school night and everything. It was like a Sunday <laughs> night. And I had to go to school the next day. Little did I know I'd be up all night. Learning <laughs> the secrets on the well, what 
I mean, I will say I was all, I had already just started to study astrology at that point. So of course I, you know, I went out to look at the stars like I did every night or at 14, I did, that was my home. And there is something that just clicked. I will tell you in that moment where I was like, yes, and yes, this is it. I started to connect to all of them. I remember laying in my backyard and um, at that moment, I said, I need to, you know, I thought I need to keep talking to my neighbor, she said, that astrologer over there. It became very clear. I didn't know about it being a career or anything, but at that moment, I can tell you, it already had started before that. But there was a whole lot of other things I won't get into that night, you know, <laughs> cutting cords and all these <laughs> things. I love it. I love it. But it was a, it was a great night and it was very affirming. I can just, I, I remember it like it's yesterday, but the stars got clearer and I began feeling more and more at home. And I thought, this is, this is me. This is what this is what I'm doing. And I did, I just continued that every day throughout high school, reading as many charts as I could. And so it's, it's been my, my life for a, a while. I mean, I haven't, you know, for, since I can remember, um, even when I was doing other jobs as we had to, you know, in our twenties and stuff, I was always just doing this in my spare time, but that was a very defining moment. Um, and, I'm, and I'm really glad that sometimes I wonder, if it hadn't happened in that way, I think I would still be doing this, but I do um, too. Anyway, I just yeah. want to share that with you. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think it coincides, right? Just because it coincides doesn't mean it's causation, for example. And so you had, I think perhaps, because I'm thinking about my own life as well, those moments I've had where there's like some breakthrough, some insight into knowing what it is that my soul needs next or needs now. And sometimes, yeah, it coincides with different things. It coincides with perhaps for you, LSD, for me, it was ecstasy. <laughs> One of those moments for others, it may coincide with uh, life circumstances changing. It tends to be reflected in the chart in some way, but perhaps your soul knew that you needed that understanding or that experience of LSD for that one time to have the breakthrough that you needed to put you on the path that you need to be put on. But people have those experiences in all kinds of ways. And when it comes trusting it, that's the thing. That's what really makes the distinction, right? Because you could have said to yourself, oh yeah, I was on LSD and whatever, that's it. Now I'm going to go get a corporate job. You could have done that too, but that's not what you did. You chose to trust it. And it takes me back to what you were saying earlier about astrology being connected to self-trust, which is very powerful. So the self-trust was there with you that led you to make those decisions anyways. That's how I see it anyways. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And, and it's not like I'm saying this is something everybody needs to do at that time, but yeah, it was definitely something that I wanted to give to other people. I wanted at that point, I said, I need to be able to um, give other people that sense of self-trust and affirmation who they are to be able to know their instinct and believe in it, believe in themselves. Cause uh, I, you know, I think it's a very confusing time being like 13, 14, 15 for anybody on the planet earth, right? And um, yeah, I think astrology is great for parents, children, all of that, but um, ultimately compassion. Like that's what I found like in the end of everything, I'm like, it really opens the heart in a way that I've never experienced. I get, it really kind of, I think at the core of it, it's there's there's a level of acceptance in this work yes and a level of just openness as well and of course i have to say though the way that you do it the way that you practice astrology deliver astrology present astrology of course those attributes are going to be there as well thank you nadia um i love 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 what you do and love talking to you here it's thoroughly inspiring you know i you know sometimes we're in the, our own worlds in astrology like it's, it can get a little yeah. lonely it's not like we yes. work with a bunch of astrologers every day so it's such a joy to be able to talk to another astrologer again it's, it's been a, a while you know um as we're all coming out of the 2020 2021 oh, yes I know, right? We're still kind of figuring our way out of it. But I totally understand what you mean, because you were saying earlier about how astrology can be delivered in all kinds of different ways, right? Like podcasts or YouTube or consults and so many other ways that astrology can be delivered. And I know for me, like, 
I feel sometimes like my job is just looking into a camera and talking like that's really it or writing or just being at my computer and allowing myself to go into a zone to write that sometimes and those moments when we connect with others like online conferences like the classes that you and I will teach that's when you really get that sense of wow we are reaching people we are doing something that is affecting people very directly. Yes, you get a sense of that in terms of like interacting with people online, social media, but then it's very powerful just to sit with another astrologer and to have this and, and to listen to each other. It's a very powerful thing. And to share is a very powerful thing. Absolutely. And we all miss conferences now. Like we miss meeting in person. Yes. And that's why I'm also so happy you're doing this, that we all get to meet in the online space again. I mean, it's been so long and there were so many conferences canceled. So thank you for really putting this together so much with Frank too. I mean, I think yes. like the whole community just can't wait to connect again. It's just, it's such an important thing to have those events. And I think you have Aquarius in you, right, Nadia? You, you yeah, you know that. that. You know it. Yourself. What? <laughs> Can't you feel it? The electricity radiating from me. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do what you're doing to bring it all together. That's pure effervescence of Aquarius. That's oh, I love you. I am going to like edit this video and take out all these nice things you've said about me and make a personal little video for myself. So in those days when I'm having a Saturn transit or something, because Saturn is about to conjunct my son any day now, um, when I'm having those moments, I could just watch Rebecca Gordon saying nice things about me. Oh, I will make one for you. Just oh. that. I will give you the pure single mom. <laughs> I love it. Rebecca, I love you. Thank you for joining us with Embracing the Community, a celebration of astrology. So once again, you guys, there is a discount code. Huge astrologers, some of the most brilliant astrologers alive today are going to be presenting at this event. And if we're talking about some of the most brilliant astrologers alive today, of course, Rebecca Gordon is right there at the top of the list. There is a discount code, limited use discount code that you can find in the description below. Thank you again, Rebecca. I loved getting to know you like this. I'm like hitting myself with the mic. Okay, microphone. I have to keep in perspective with you. My enthusiasm is getting the best of me. And I'm like wanting to jump into my computer because I've just loved getting to know you so much. Thank you, Rebecca, for all the love and the brilliance and the insights that you bring and all the wonderful ways in which you represent astrology. And really, uh, I mean, a lot of some people, not a lot, but some people are out there publicly able to bring astrology to these bigger stages. And here you are doing it with so much intelligence and class and beauty and dignity. And I just celebrate you. I am just so proud of all that you continue to do in astrology. Nadia, thank you. It is an absolute honor to be here with you right now. And I truly admire you, all of the work you're doing, and especially what we're doing together in this conference that you and Frank are putting together right now. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so much fun. I hope we get to connect again soon. Yes, Thank absolutely. You, yeah, well, we're going to connect at the conference. So that's going to be a lot of fun and it's not far away at all. And thank you everybody out there for joining us, for seeing the love fest that is Nadia Shah and Rebecca Gordon. Imagine what it's going to be at the conference is going to be amazing. But yes, thank you everybody out there for watching. And until we connect again, take care. Bye. See you all at the conference.